Yo, what is going on today, Summoners? We're back with another RTA commentary video. And today, we are going to look at SWC contender, high, high level player, Beast Rider Abuser, Judas. I wanted to do something showcasing a lot of Beast Riders. Um, they are kind of the talk of the town ever since they released. Even though Art Masters and String Masters have come out since, the Beast Riders still seem to be the king on the battlefield right now as, as far as new units go because they just do so much each of their skills is got so many things that that it does for the unit for the team against your opponent that they they are very very strong units right now and it is widely suspected and being asked for that they might get a little bit of a nerf um in a in an upcoming balance patch you know a side note swc um or sorry so side note, uh, Legend Tournament for Season 13 has been announced to go June 27th, right after Season 13 ends. So we've got 12 days from the time of this recording until the Season 13 ends. And it's really, really consistent, common, that we get a balance patch right around Season End or in between seasons. So hopefully in about two weeks we're gonna see a balance patch coming out you guys and we're gonna see things like miho getting an earth beast riders getting toned down maybe antares will get toned down a little bit as well hard to say but we'll just have to wait and see you guys hopefully some other units get buffs there's a lot of units that could really stand to get buffed as well but that's a sidetrack what we're here for is some rta commentary let's get into some action with judas but first please be sure to like and comment on the video subscribe to the channel as it helps us out a ton well, let's go watch some matches First off, we got Judas versus Chris 041. Chris opens with the Hathor, very strong first pick. We see Masha coming in on Judas' side of the field, but Chris counters immediately with Savannah and Barbara himself. So we see all three Beast Riders coming out in this match, you guys. Tessarion, when was the last time you guys saw Tessarion used? In case you guys don't know, if you put Oblivion on a mounted Beast Rider and kill it, it doesn't dismount, it just dies. If you guys didn't know that. So that is why Tessarion was picked by Judas here and not a bad band at all uh, by Chris considering he's bringing in double Beast Riders. It's almost like a force band that Judas put out there with that Tessarion. So very advantageous and he picked it early enough that he still had that fifth pick flex so that he could try to counter the team. So he's got the Ragdoll and, and the Wusa here as well. Is that a Wusa or is that a Negong? I'm pretty sure it's a Wusa. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell with the transmog in the baby form here. But the Savannah is about to die. Almost so is Masha here. If that is a Negong though, it will be revived. I still can't quite tell from the colors, you guys. All right, I, I think that's definitely a Wusa. Look at the buffs. It's definitely a Wusa. I don't know what I'm talking about here. So Sierra's bombs rendered kind of a moot point. Hathor rendered kind of a moot point right now. Gets the dismount on the Barbara, you guys. And that is going to be game. Judas is an exceptionally good and strong player. So it's going to be really fun to see the rest of these matches and how they go. Next up, we have Judas versus Moki. This is the first of two rounds for these players. So we see the Masha and Ragdoll coming out first. There is Juno and Rakuni into the Nefties. Interesting. We also see an Alicia, which, I mean, Judas representing so much fire. Alicia being a big damage dealer isn't too bad. But we got an Oberon on Moki's side of the field as well. And look at that beautiful, beautiful new Tiana skin there to go along with it all. Gets the silence on the Rakuni and the Ragdoll and the attack break as well. Juno gets straight up sniped with that attack buff and Laika actually almost one shot that Oberon. In case you guys didn't know, Justice, the uh, Chow Laika second skill and Jaeger and Jaeger second skill ignores shields and invincibility. Um, any any buffs that reduce damage, that skill ignores it. So 
That's why he was able to punch through that shield there. Really, really strong ability into certain units just like that. And this Rakuni is uh, not... He, he, he's doing a little bit, but he needs to be going a little bit faster there. He gets a cleanse, but because the, the way to kind of beat Rakuni's passive, you guys, is to make sure that he is the most damaged unit. Um, or, or to manage which unit has the most damage. Because Rakuni's cleanse and heal only applies to the unit with the lowest HP ratio on your team. So if, if you can choose which unit you want to have being cleansed and healed you keep that unit at a certain level while you ma manage the the rest of the other ones try to set up for a snipe or a one-two punch whatever you need to do um to kill the other units or you bring two units down kind of simultaneously until it's within kill range. But there you go. Round one goes to Judas. Let's go watch round two. Round two. Judas and Moki. Here we go. Bastet first pick. Sticking to the cleave. We see the ragdoll Masha coming in. There's Miho. And... Ooh, Alexandra too with the Tiana. We do see Barbara coming in with Samath. Who is getting a little bit more gameplay these days. And Tyrannus. Oh, right. Wow, that is a fast Masha and Barber, you guys. Both of them outspeeding that Draco, and they team up to get the kill on the Draco. That is kind of insane. That really puts Moki behind the eight ball. But look at that damage coming out from Alexandra, getting the glancing and attack breaks out. Not all on everyone. And he picks the Samath. That's Samath getting the double stuns right there. Not a bad time to try and kill that Samath, though. Do it while you can. We see the revive come out on the dismounted Barbara and a big violent proc. That should be enough to take out Bastet as well. And that is basically game. Alexander does do some reflect damage, so we'll see what happens. There's no heals on Judas' side of the field, but he does have revive. So uh, there goes Samath. Samath is gone. But there goes Alexandra. Too many damage sources on Judas' side of the field. Alexandra's reflect couldn't deal with them all. Judas versus too bad for you. Let's see if it is too bad for him. So we see Judas opening with the ragdoll. There is triple elemental beast riders with a Chiwu as well. We see Savannah and Gianna getting the bands. So no immunity on Judas' side of the field into this Hathor and it does decide. We do have shield runes so that is likely the reason for the Gianna ban but I would have to make an argument that I feel uh, Hathor would be a little bit more oppressive. Then again, Hathor doesn't bring damage to the field. Gianna brings damage. Who am I to question this level of player? But we are going to see this Chiwu go down before much else. A big violent proc from the Vigor here. And there is one, also one from Ragdoll. And everybody is back up. Judas has just got so much speed that he actually burned through all that sleep. And too bad for you. Tanks the match right there. Kind of surprising that he exited that early uh, with no sustained in heals on the opponent's side of the field or in immunity while you have CC and heals. Little surprising, little surprising. I would have hung around at least a little bit longer until I was in a worse situation, but... Maybe I'm just a glutton for punishment. I don't know. I don't know. You guys let me know down below if that if you thought that was an early exodus by Too Bad For You. Let's go check out another one. Judas and Boku Desu. Boku is opening with the Molong pick with Tyrannus and Harmonia. Pretty common comp uh, there. There's the Daphnis and Miho to round it out. We see the Sukmet coming out as the counter pick. Miho and Sukmet getting the bands, you guys. Sukmet is actually a pretty good unit um, in, into some very, very strong current meta monsters. So if you've got one, I recommend a damage build for her, but build her up. She is worth it. Big resistance from the Chiu on the defense break there. Not going to be anywhere near enough damage without an attack buff, but Harmonia is there to help bring him back and Mo Long is gonna clean up the trash you guys there goes Chiwu Ooh, big proc from the Savannah this Tyrannus is about to proc his passive there goes Daphnis as well now who do you bring back he brings back the Daphnis you guys so either this Harmonia needs to work double time to keep this uh, druid alive long enough for him to get his revive back 
or that spells game for Boku Desu. I don't know if it would have been better to put the soul protection on himself, being that it could get stripped by the Beast Riders, but we'll see what happens here. There goes Tyrannus. The game is not what fully over yet, but it's looking pretty much so. Um, obviously, Harmonia can do some do some work here. Get would have got the sleep on the Masha there, but dismounted in it instead. Oh, that is actually that is most unfortunate. This is one of the things I would love to see change about Beast Riders is that they, whatever buffs or debuffs they have when they get dismounted it stays with them in their dismounted form. Round two versus Judas and Bokudasu versus both of them. The round is versus them in the end. This is how it, this is how it actually works, you guys, is everybody here is fighting against each other, but they're really, everybody's fighting against um, the rounds. That, that, that's how it works, in case you didn't know. So Daphnis and Miho getting the bands. We do see Leo making it through. Now, Leo's passive is going to uh, lower the damage of the Beast Riders by a pretty decent amount. And considering Judas has all three Beast Riders, Leo's passive is a lot of damage mitigation in and of itself. Plus, we've got the Fran here for heals. But do we have enough damage and turn cycling to still overcome these Beast Riders? Obviously, the Ragdoll pick here is insanely strong for that turn cycling um, with already super, super fast uh, ruined units and there goes the Fran she's gone big counter by the Verd there it actually we do see Masha getting dismounted there another counter from the Verd but Masha is gonna come in not enough damage I don't think she got a good crit there there goes Masha we are three and three but this Verd uh, must be a triple revenge Verd with how often he's revenging here I haven't noticed a violent proc yet but that doesn't mean he doesn't violent proc Let's see. No, I think it's a triple revenge Verd, you guys. That is the power of it right there. Verd is gone. Savannah is going to be dismounted. And we are still very, very strong here. This Leo is going to be in torrent range really, really soon. And that's going to be a, a one-shot deal for the Ragdoll, I would presume. But there, he's taking out the Vela Jewel first. Smart turn. Ren, there it goes. But the Reflect damage. The Reflect damage was enough to finish him and leaves Barbara standing high on her beast. Good game. 2-0 Judas. Judas versus Forrest. So Forrest opens with the Hathor pick. Here comes Judas with Masha Vela Jewel. There we see Gany Chi, who already have already talks to comp. Savannah Ragdoll coming out into Vigor and Ileana. There's Barbara, triple Beast Rider again, with Ragdoll and Hathor getting the bands. All right, so finally Ragdoll gets a band. We're going to see what happens here. Big reset on the Barbara, pushes them all back, and Vigor is going to come out. Look at the proc, then decides to go for the buff, because why not? But the defense break is already out. Three turn defense break, by the way. Chu, not quite enough damage to kill, but Vigor will get the kill here. I need to figure out how this Vigor is ruined because I need to do mine like that, you guys. And almost gonna be enough to put that Masha down. There's briefing from Ileana, and that's gonna do it for Masha, you guys. We got the glance on the Savannah. Barbara's cooled down, but here comes Velajul. Velajul gets everybody buffed up. And we're gonna see, just Chiwu, Chiwu does not have a strip yet. Resets the Ileana so she can come back, brief up. Now we're gonna see Predators cry, and that's gonna do it for Vigor. But at least he managed to get his buffs out on his team one last time before he went down there. All right, can we get the dismount on the Savannah? Gotta put this unit down now. I, I there goes the Savannah down for once and for all. Here goes Knight. Oh, big attack bar resist by Velajul there. Ventilates the Ileana one more time. This is so gross. Not that Ileana even needs ventilating. Her skill cooldowns are so low. Another unit that I hope gets touched on and tweaked a little bit in a balance patch. No briefing on herself and maybe an additional cooldown on briefing as well because it is insanely easy. She just gives another unit on your field a turn or herself, which is even grosser. See, like that, that should not be allowed to happen. That cycling right there, that to me should not be allowed to happen. But here we are, Barbara is about to get dismounted here. 
Oh, big proc, big proc. See, she cycles so much, you guys. She cycles so much. No, no sleep, no sleep coming out. And there's the kill on the Chiwu, and that is gonna do it. Triple Beast Riders. All right, so just since since we just talked about it, I had to go look, and yes, here is Judas, ranked 44 in the world right now. Another Triple Beast Rider, Judas versus. I'm just gonna call him Shimite because that's who they got in their picture here. So we see the Ragdoll, the Vela Jewel, the Masha. Look at all the standard draft coming out on uh, Shimite's side of the field and the Rika, who has actually proven to be a pretty strong unit of late. Surprising to see the Hathor and Rika picked together since they obviously counter each other uh, very hard. That was one squishy, squishy Verdihil though. Oh my goodness, there goes Verd. Already Shimite is in a very, very bad position. Does not blow up the bomb on the Masha. Smart play, because there's no cleanse, no sh to, to cleanse the bomb. And it was already stunned. But, oh, look at that. She does not get stunned by the bomb and is able to come in and do some damage to the Rika. As Barbara is going to get dismounted and the Sierra is turn cycling like crazy right now. So we see a bomb also... Go out onto the Masha. You better blow it this time. Also blow up the one on the Ragdoll. Goodbye, Masha. Ragdoll is very, very low. He's going to want to get a kill on this Ragdoll very soon, you guys. Or that is going to be game. Oh, that might be enough. That might be enough. Gets the stuns. Oh, gets the stuns. Goodbye, Barbara. That's going to bring up Bomb again for Sierra. But she goes for the dismount first. Are we going to see a sleep? No sleep. Can get the kill. Oh, and the big Violet proc. Do we get, nope, nothing coming out of the Rika here. She gets the, oh, she gets the Fire Guardian Angel. Does she land dots? She gets triple dots. Is it gonna be enough? No! Oh, 1% HP left on the Savannah, you guys. I don't know that Shibate could have done much more in that battle. That was a very good battle and very well played. We've got Judas versus, I'm gonna call you Angry Fox. Angry Fox. So Angry Fox takes the Ragdoll first. Judas is normal first pick. He comes back with Tyrannus uh, in its stead. And we do see a Verdi Hill come out as well. We see the anti-crit buff of Vigor being banned here. There is Triana. She is going to be public enemy number one. And look at that. Bastet goes for skill two instead of skill three to start to put the debuffs out. Try and get glancing on this Verdi Hill and it worked it actually works so violent verti heal here oh violent ragdoll as well puts a hurting on the masha masha does not get the kill on the ragdoll but very very close to proccing that triana pass the triana comes in with a huge sleep and violent proc as well another violent proc oh judas is getting every turn procs right now angry fox is getting procs right now this is anybody's game you guys there is triana's passive propped Masha is back on the beast. No provokes because immunity is across the field thanks to Triana there. Torrent coming out. There goes Vertihill. He is going to be gone for the match, I feel, at this point. Triana procking like crazy here. Masha gets dismounted from the dot. Big additional turn from Savannah. And that almost does it for Triana. Big, big debuffs coming out from Bastet there. Gets the kill on the Masha. There goes Triana as well. And we are down to Tyrannus, you guys. He is in a tough way. Oh, what a stun and proc though, even with glancing. Granted, it was favorable element. He had element advantage on the Bastet, but what a stun and proc. This, but now Juno is turn cycling so hard. Do we have Forest of Living? We do not have Forest of Living. I think that is gonna do it for this Tyrannus, you guys. There it comes. Masha is back on the field and she gets stunned by Judo. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding? She is now dismounted. Another wild blow coming out from Tyrannus here. But oh man, not going to be enough damage. Juno is going to kill Masha. This Juno is actually doing work right now. I've started to see a few more Junos in gameplay and she seems to be doing pretty strong these days. So, uh... Very, very powerful unit if ruined good. And she takes a despair set, uh, often built despair revenge, which you don't see um, 
use too often. Not a lot of high level units use despair runes. So you can afford to put one of your best despair sets on the Juno. Super high crit rate. And she's going to turn cycle like a beast. Anyways, you guys, that is going to do it for this video. As always, if you enjoyed it, please be sure to drop me a like and a comment down below. Hit that subscribe button as it greatly supports the channel. And I will see you guys all in the next one. Happy summoning.